Have you ever wondered, could life exist on Venus, our solar system's second planet from the Sun? Let's journey back in time around four and a half billion years ago when our sister planet Venus was born. A celestial infant forming from the same stellar nursery as Earth, Venus was once a molten world, its surface reshaped and defined by violent volcanic activity. In the grand tapestry of space, Venus is remarkably similar to Earth. They're nearly identical in size, with Venus measuring about 95% the size of Earth. Their gravitational pulls are similar too, with Venus boasting about 90% of Earth's gravity. A quick glance at their compositions reveals even more parallels. Both planets are rocky, with a core of iron surrounded by a mantle of silicate rock. These striking similarities sparked early speculations that Venus might be a second Earth, a haven for life as we know it. After all, if two planets share so many common features, it's not a leap to think that they might share the capability to support life too, right? Our early understanding of Venus painted a picture of a tropical paradise, with oceans, lush vegetation, and maybe even life forms of its own. This image was fueled by a sense of optimism and the human tendency to see patterns where none exist, a phenomenon known as pareidolia. But as our knowledge grew, so too did our understanding of the stark differences between Earth and Venus. We began to see Venus not as a mirror of Earth, but as a cautionary tale of planetary evolution gone wrong. Venus represents a path that Earth fortunately did not take, a path that led to a planet shrouded in thick, toxic clouds, with surface temperatures hot enough to melt lead. This is the true face of Venus, a world that is both fascinating and terrifying in its stark contrast to our own. However, as we delved deeper into the mysteries of Venus, we discovered a very different reality. As our understanding of Venus evolved, so did our perception of its habitability. In the early days of space exploration, Venus was an enigma, shrouded in mystery and intrigue. The first missions to Venus were launched with a sense of optimism, fueled by the prospect of discovering another Earth-like planet in our solar system. The Soviet Union's Venera missions, as well as NASA's Mariner and Pioneer missions, were among the first to probe this veiled planet. But what they discovered was far from hospitable. Venus, it turns out, is a world of extremes. The surface temperatures are hot enough to melt lead, averaging around 867 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hotter than the surface of Mercury, the planet closest to the Sun. This intense heat is due to a runaway greenhouse effect where the heat from the sun is trapped within Venus's dense atmosphere, causing temperatures to soar. The surface pressure on Venus is equally extreme, over 92 times that of Earth. This is equivalent to the pressure you'd experience about half a mile deep in Earth's oceans. Such crushing pressure would instantly squash any terrestrial life forms. And let's not forget about the atmosphere, it's composed almost entirely of carbon dioxide with clouds of sulfuric acid, this toxic combination makes the air on Venus not just unbreathable for humans, but it's also incredibly corrosive. Even our most robust spacecraft can only survive a few hours in these conditions before they're destroyed. So, while Venus might be similar to Earth in size and composition, its environment is anything but Earth-like. The extreme heat, pressure, and toxic atmosphere present a trifecta of challenges for life as we know it. These harsh conditions quickly quashed any hope of finding life as we know it on Venus. But, as we'll see in the next scene, that doesn't mean we've stopped looking. Venus, with its runaway greenhouse effect, serves as a stark warning of the potential consequences of climate change. A greenhouse effect is a natural phenomenon that warms a planet's surface. It occurs when the atmosphere of a planet, like a greenhouse, traps some of the sun's energy, preventing it from escaping back into space, thereby warming the planet. But what happens when this effect runs amok? Let's dig into the extreme example set by our neighbor Venus. Venus, often referred to as Earth's twin, is similar in size, mass, and composition. However, the resemblance ends there. Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system, with an average surface temperature of around 864 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than the surface of Mercury despite being further from the Sun. This extreme heat is a result of a potent greenhouse effect, Venus's atmosphere, composed mainly of carbon dioxide, along with clouds of sulfuric acid, traps heat from the sun. This trapped heat can't escape back into space, causing temperatures to rise. Now you may wonder how did Venus reach such a catastrophic state? Some scientists believe that Venus might have once had oceans, similar to Earth. But as the sun became hotter in its early life, 
the oceans evaporated. Water vapor, a potent greenhouse gas built up in the atmosphere, trapping more heat and causing more water to evaporate in a vicious cycle known as a runaway greenhouse effect. This feedback loop eventually boiled the oceans away completely, leaving a parched, blistering world behind. The result? A planet with a surface hot enough to melt lead, atmospheric pressure 92 times that of Earth, and a sky raining sulfuric acid. Thus, what could have been a sister planet to Earth turned into a hellscape? This is a cautionary tale of the potential consequences of unchecked greenhouse gases. As we look to the stars, we must also remember to take care of our own blue oasis, ensuring that we don't follow in Venus's fiery footsteps. Despite the inhospitable conditions, the question remains, could some form of life exist on Venus? In our quest to understand the universe and our place within it, we've often found ourselves drawn to the tantalizing prospect of extraterrestrial life. The harsh conditions on Venus might seem a deterrent at first, but recent scientific findings have ignited a spark of possibility that we can't ignore. A few short years ago, scientists stumbled upon a fascinating discovery in Venus's dense toxic atmosphere. They detected traces of a gas called phosphine, a molecule typically associated with life here on Earth. This pungent, flammable gas is produced by bacteria that thrive in oxygen-free environments. Its presence on Venus therefore raises an intriguing possibility. Could there be microbial life on our neighboring planet? Before we get carried away, it's important to note that the detection of phosphine is not a definitive proof of life. It's a potential biosignature, a sign that could indicate life, but also has non-biological explanations. For instance, it could be produced through geological activity or a yet unknown chemical process. However, the fact that we can't fully explain its presence through any known non-biological means adds to the mystery and intrigue. The debate surrounding the phosphine findings is intense and ongoing. Some scientists have questioned the reliability of the data and suggested that the detected phosphine might be a result of sulfur dioxide, a common gas in Venus's atmosphere. To settle this debate, we need more data, more observations, and more research. Several future missions to Venus are already in the planning stages, with the hope of unraveling this cosmic mystery. These missions will carry sophisticated instruments capable of detecting and analyzing Venusian atmospheric gases with unprecedented precision. So, while Venus might not be habitable for humans, it might not be entirely lifeless. The search for life, as we know, is a complex endeavor, and Venus, with its tantalizing hints of possibility, is a reminder that the answers we seek often lie where we least expect them. So, what's next for our exploration of Venus? As we delve deeper into the 21st century, our curiosity about Venus remains unquenched, propelling us towards new and exciting missions. Two such missions, NASA's Da Vinci Plus and Veritas, are slated to launch towards the latter half of this decade. Da Vinci Plus, which stands for Deep Atmosphere Venus Investigation of Noble Gases, Chemistry and Imaging, will examine Venus's atmosphere, seeking to understand its composition, how it formed and evolved, and whether it ever hosted an ocean. This mission will be our first dedicated probe into the atmosphere of Venus since the 1970s. Its findings could provide crucial insights into the potential habitability of other planets in our galaxy. On the other hand, VERITAS, an acronym for Venus Emissivity, Radio Science INSAR, Topography and Spectroscopy, will orbit Venus, mapping its surface to understand the planet's geologic history. This mission aims to determine whether tectonic or volcanic activity is currently happening on Venus, and could also provide evidence of a possible water history. Last year's detection of phosphine in Venus's atmosphere stirred up quite a buzz. This gas on Earth is produced by bacteria in oxygen-free environments, leading to speculations about the possibility of life on Venus. Upcoming missions will aim to confirm the source of this phosphine, whether it's from geological activity, a byproduct of sunlight-induced reactions, or as we dare to dream, an indicator of life. In our quest to understand Venus, we are not just unraveling the mysteries of another planet, we are gaining a deeper understanding of the delicate balance that enables life on our own planet. Venus, with its runaway greenhouse effect and possible volcanic activity, serves as a stark warning of the potential consequences of climate change. While Venus may not be a second Earth, it continues to captivate us with its mysteries and serves as a potent reminder of the delicate balance that enables life on our own planet.